Okay, Rafi, so I have started. I hope you can see the screen, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so it was d45, uh, e3, knight f6, bishop d3, c6, and f4. So uh, he's playing like the reverse London, uh, sorry, not London, but Dutch, yeah, you can say. Isn't this the Collie system? Uh, but in the Collie system, you don't go for the F4 move, yeah? Right. So once he plays F4, it, it goes from the Collie, switches into the other thing, right? Yeah, reverse. So basically, if you look at this position, yeah? So let's just see it from White's perspective, okay? Like when Black plays F5, yeah? Yeah. So normally, this is how we play. So G3, E6, Bishop G2, and D5, yeah? This is the Stonewall formation, right? Right. So we play c4 and c6. So this is this is exactly what white is doing, just with one extra tempo, you can say. Got it. Makes sense. So I have actually seen that in this, like against this setup, especially for Caro can players, yeah, it's best to play c5 in this position, not c6. It's best to just go for c5. Got it. The the biggest advantage, like what I feel is, like for example, yeah, if he plays something like c3, right? So here right. he can already take, he takes d4, he takes d4, and this converts into your caro can. Uh, yes. It's an exact and I also mentioned the c5 move. It's the more aggressive way because, because Peter is a very aggressive kind of player. Like knowing that, I should have just gone for this c5 idea. The reason I didn't play c5, I, I did consider it, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Is because you know we talked about keeping my structures as similar as possible in the majority of my openings. Yeah. Because I'm already familiar with this Karo Slav type of structure with C6 and D5. Mm -hmm. I figured maybe I'll, maybe I'll just try to play something that I'm already familiar with. But I think in this case, I think you're right. Just putting pressure on him right away makes a lot more sense. Okay. Um. Yeah. I think. Uh. Uh. I mean. Yeah. That actually. See. C6 is. Uh. I mean, not a big issue. Like I don't think it's a big problem. But here, what happens is um, you have to play slightly uh, creative, you know, like basically I know that in this position, the best idea is to play g6. So right. you, you actually just go bishop f5, yeah? That's the whole thing. Right. This is actually a line that I already play in the, um, whenever they play the c4 variant, I think the pan of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I should have gone for this. I have no idea why I forgot about this whole idea of being kettoing like this, but I, for some reason, I think thought that because it's a, he already committed to a stonewall situation, I thought I would just play it as a stonewall myself where I would just trade off on F3 mm -hmm. and then somehow be able to quickly get in 94 and F5, but I couldn't do that at all. And it made no sense the way I played it, honestly. Uh, it's I I think it's uh it's a bit difficult to get knight e4 uh from your side yeah that easily right. so I mean generally that's why actually this was I I remember this was uh, Fisher's game so like in in his book yeah my sixty memorable games uh Fisher said that because white is not committing anything I just like go g6 here itself you know right so basically blocking this whole idea yeah like of Bishop to f7 stuff. So come, right. just seeing this, I think f4 is basically favoring black. Eh? It's like a further weakness, you can say. So um, we should just go bishop here. I, I have always played c5 in this position, like most of the times. Like my games have always been like this and knight c6. So here white goes f4 and now I go bishop g4. So this, this pawn allows me some additional queen b6 idea there. Yeah? And what if he takes the c5 pawn? Uh, at which point? Like right now? Just to stay, yeah, sure. So here we always start with a5, yeah? So he has no b4. So we're going to play this like a queen's gambit accepted from the black side? Exactly. The bishop will stay at on c8 or no? Uh, but, uh, if, if I get... So here the point is, like, I'm getting e5 very easily, yeah? So the bishop will go to e6. Okay. So that's that's the whole idea. And there is no no issues. Like the, there are lines with e5 here directly, but I think it's not necessary right now. So like just a5 is the simplest way. Do you think this is a better way to play than with the g6 variation? This is more uh, like uh, I would say that if you're trying to win, 
from black this is the better way okay this is i mean you are you are obviously having more space and more freedom yeah so you should just play but okay getting but this will, yeah this will definitely lead to more complications out of the opening though right like there's going to be a lot more stuff like queen b6 queen b3 hitting b7 like if i'm if my goal is to try to castle as early as possible before any complications start should i opt for c5 or g6 in this oh. If you want to castle as quickly as possible, you should go g6 straight away here itself without without okay. c6. Because see, c6 here, uh, like to me, it's not a bad move, but it's also a move with no idea, yeah? Right. Because now you don't have any pressure on uh, d5. So let's just play g6 first. And, you know, we, we never know, yeah? Like we might get c5 after castling as well directly. And we wait for white. If white plays c4, now now I can go c6, yeah, without any problem. Okay, got it. Let me ask you another question. Yeah. Instead of g6, mm -hmm. what happens if I just play bishop g4 here? Um, will he play f3? I think, yes, he will probably go for f3. But again, that's also not that bad for you. Like you can just play bishop h5, bishop g6, and get rid of that bishop. Okay. Bishop g4 is ever... also playable here. It's absolutely fine. Right, because usually, you know, by the, by this point, white usually has moved the c pawn, so queen b3 is an option. But here, that's not because he hasn't yeah, moved c pawn yet, right? Yeah, there isn't. He he white white will go knight e2 here, but before he comes knight f4, we will play bishop g6. Yeah, so black should be absolutely fine in this position as well. Uh... I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't know the open, but yeah, okay. Well, of course, black is fine here. Yeah, all these options make so much more logical sense than what I did. Makes sense. <laughs> I pretty much played right into white's hands. Like this is exactly what white wanted out of this opening. Yeah, so see, if if you want to go for the stone wall idea, yeah, like to put knight on e4, I think this is your chance to play it. Mm. And now I would have... rather not play this way and play with a doubled pawn like that. It's not like one of my preferred methods yeah. of playing. I see that that is why I don't suggest this uh, f4 bishop g4 idea because it really gives like some weird positions here, yeah, which is not, I mean, where you are not familiar with actually. Right. So I think it's uh, not necessary, but, but okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure. And this is, this is something which a lot of players actually make a mistake, you know, with Bishop to D6. So I'm, I'm just going to explain you. Yeah? Is, is the Bishop like doing anything on this diagonal? No. It, it can never break this pawn, yeah? Like, I don't think you are going to play at 6 g5 yeah, anytime soon. Right. So when you put the bishop on d6, yeah. the problem is whenever knight... So it's pretty obvious that you are going to play the knight to d7, yeah? I can assume that much. You're limiting yourself because you can never take on e5 with yeah. the knight. Exactly. That's the point. So bishop e7, this is the best square. Yep. Absolutely makes sense. Okay, Very logical. So, so the my my point is like whenever white plays this uh, queen, e, so white usually goes yeah this queen e one stuff here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So here, of course, I'm gonna castle first, and let's say something like c three, and I can play this knight d seven. So now at least I have this option of just taking and playing knight e four yeah in this position. Yes, that's true. Because now if he takes, well, he has a lot of white square weaknesses. Yeah, I mean, I can get some queen d5, b5, c5. Like, I will play on the light squares easily. His knight cannot attack me. And my bishop will, of course, find a nice place on f5. Yeah, you cannot do anything to it. Yeah, this makes sense. And at the right time, I will break with f6, you know, with double bishops. Because, see, the, the problem is white's bishop never gets active in this line. Right. So, bishop, but this can only happen if you put your bishop on e7. The moment you go bishop d6, you are, you are already a bit late for this one because now you cannot capture, yeah? Right, yes, yes. There is no way to capture it. So, about c5, I think, I mean, 
lucky enough, this is working, but I would have again instantly played bishop f5. Right. Makes sense. Because if he captures, yeah, this like this thing with doubled f pawn, this is actually not bad for black. Right. Because I believe that uh, at some point, so it's pretty obvious I'm not going to take here, but at some point I will play something like rook e8 and try to play f6. Uh, Rafi, hang on a second. Kevin is online. Yeah, Kevin is joining, right? Hey, sorry, so late. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's fine. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how are you? Oh, just waking up. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, no, you're good, man. Fine. You're good. Glad you're here. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, don't mean to interrupt. Let's uh, let's keep going. I don't don't want to. Uh, okay. So we were actually just checking out this ref is uh one loss in in a oh. game. So Peter Bridget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I independently looked at that game, so yeah, I, uh, it was an interesting one. Okay. Sorry to say, Rafi. <laughs> no, for sure. I'm realizing a lot of the things that I <clears throat> obvious mistakes I made, really. Uh, so, so uh, Rafi, I just shared something with you. Uh, I mean, in this study itself. So this was one of my games which I played, and you can see actually it's very similar thing, yeah, which you got, and. Mm -hmm. You can see my piece position, yeah. Like I'm straight away going for this line. Yeah. I I mean I didn't even commit anything with c6 and like even knight. Actually, I I decided not to play knight f6 as well so that I can have the option of playing f6 if the knight comes here, and my knight can always go knight f6, knight f7, and I will get the e5 break as well. Oh wow, that's interesting. I've never seen that kind of maneuver in this. Yeah, no, it, I mean, obviously, I didn't go for it. I mean, it, it's, it, obviously, there are some lines where this happens, especially in the caro can, actually. But, uh, I mean, I have played it in the past as well, but it was not necessary because you can see now Black's play is very more, like, way more comfortable. It's like yeah. in, in a Benoni, too, right? But the, the, the Benoni has that maneuver on the, on the queen side. On the queen side, bring... yeah. Knight a6, knight c7, and b5, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's also true. So in, in this way, Rafi, you can see this, the moment I got this queen b6 and, you know, it, it was just very easy play for me. And, okay, I just got this position and, like, basically, black, like, there is no scope for the bishop. Yeah, yeah right. that's very nice. So I just... Black looks, looks like he has an easy flow to play. Yes, yes, completely. Why has to figure out what to do? Yeah, basically, Sorry. white has to wait for a long time. Yeah, like white has to wait for black's plan, and it it didn't work out so well for white because the e three is gonna fall eventually, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a lot of a uh, lot of issue on e three, and here even I found like a very small detail with queen a six force him to play a three and then queen e six. So basically, in the end game, I mean, if obviously Everything I can see in that. Place. Yeah, the the point is like obviously there will be something happening on e3 and there will be massive exchanges, but whenever the exchanges happen, like you know my my king can go to a4 and b3. Yeah, at the point. Oh, interesting. So that's why I just provoked. Uh, I mean, white to play a3 and then came this way. So it was like a very small detail, but probably very important one. I I don't think I needed to use that one but it was definitely giving me some additional chances you know so yeah yeah so here my opponent actually played b3 or else i would have just like i would have just taken my king to b3 mm. then then you know eventually this will win yeah like when once i get here i will win the pawn gotcha makes sense so I visualized that part from this moment because it's like very forcing. White has no chance to defend on e3. So this queen queen a6 was very helpful actually. Yeah, that's crazy. Like thinking about that far in the end game, this at this point in the game, I would have. <laughs> the only kind of thing that I like that that I've learned these days is to try to push the king away from the center. Like sometimes I'll give a check on h7 to play, make him play king uh, like h1 or something. 
because I know in the end game he'll be a little further from the center. But other than that, to think about an end game scenario at this point in the game is, man, that's crazy. Like I would have not thought of that. I wouldn't have thought about the position like that. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, it was not that difficult for me because, like, I mean, it's like, you know, White has no plans, yeah? So I was trying to get the maximum out of the position. And, yeah, it's like one further more pawn on the dark squares, making this bishop, like, even horrible. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I first thought. But then I realized that if I get to some sort of an endgame, I have some extra additional points for my king. Right. Yeah. And also, this prevents white from playing b3. Yeah? Like, in, in this position, if I move my queen, of course, white can try to play b3 in this position. Yeah, So, mm -hmm. that's his only break, actually, in the position. So, after queen a6, white has no pawn break. No, like, obviously, g4 can never work. So, without any pawn breaks, white has no chance. And, okay, after this, it was just too easy. I, I, actually, it was not necessary because, as I said, yeah, she just... Uh, played b3 at some point and gave me like okay now she has like way more additional weaknesses so i just found the right breaks at the right time and things were just easy now for me mm -hmm. so i even found this a so now a4 is coming and this pawn is falling so it's like okay resignable position mm -hmm. so this 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 what i mean you can actually look at this opening setup this is way much i mean even way better for black than what you got in your game and yeah. to be very honest like even if white's if white would have played bishop d3 here i would have probably just played something like knight f6 because this this always is favorable for black yeah like this square right this yeah is i've had this kind of position before in the, like i said in the pan of where i'll just accept this i'll play e6 or something castle king h8 rook g8 yeah. the positions usually like are fine to play never had any issues this is very, very comfortable to play. And again, the problem is white has like very uh, questionable future yeah, about this bishop on c1. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, it's like a bit strange of a position. Okay, we'll get back to the game. Uh, and Kevin, I was also explaining uh, this situation. I think I should just share with you. So in structures like this, uh, while developing the f8 bishop, uh, we should just keep it on e7. This actually gives us the additional opportunity oh. to play knight d7 and knight e5 once he puts his knight on e5. Okay, yeah. I would put it on, on d... Yeah, there. Yeah, oh, so the, the point is, like, in this one, you can see, actually, when white plays knight e5, now you don't have the yeah. chance to play knight e5. Or, yeah. yeah. And of course, you will definitely never give this dark square bishop because the moment you give it up, then white's bishop just gets too active on this diagonal. Right. Gotcha. So that's that makes bad. a lot of sense. Yeah. So so that's why it's always safe to play bishop e7 because you can act. I mean, I, I understand that d6 looks more active, but the thing is, it's actually looking at a block diagonal. Yeah. So it's no point putting there. Right. So that's the logic seven. that I used to put it on d6 also, by the way. I did consider that I'll lose the opportunity of knight takes e5. I did even consider that too in the game. But I thought, okay, let me just stick with the more, most principled move and just went for it. But it makes sense. Like, yeah, on e7, it's just as active, honestly. Yeah, I mean, basically, the bishop's task is to control this diagonal, yeah? Right, so right. And you are ready to castle. This this rule is actually seen in um, many Catalan openings. So so Rafi and I have started discussing the Catalan as well. So this is just one line that I wanted to show you. So in the closed Catalan, basically, this is very commonly seen. Always black plays bishop e7 here. Like this is the most played move in this position and also the best move. Because the bishop on d6 is always vulnerable. So whenever queen c2, so let's say this line happens, and white plays e4, yeah? Now you don't have a chance to play bishop e7 because e5 is coming. Mm -hmm. So you have to just take it, and this allows, again, a tempo on the bishop. And, you know, you, you allow his queen to be centralized. Next, his rook is coming. Yes. And knight e5 is coming. So basically the point was, if you, like, here, of course, again, d6 looks like the most natural semi-slav square, yeah, for the bishop. But yeah. 
again, the question is, is it actually going to do anything on this diagonal? Okay. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And even for white, though, if white wants to play this uh, bishop f4, it's still okay for him probably to do that, right? Like, it's not going to be a significantly worse structure for him to play if he chooses to play bishop f4 anyway. Uh, no, I, I think uh, in, in this line, so I, I just can show you actually in this line, in many many of the open Catalan positions even. So let's just say if we go for the main line here, queen c2, a6, queen c4, b5, queen c2, bishop b7. So this is one of the main positions in the Catalan, yeah, like bishop b7. So here when bishop f4 comes, black plays bishop d6, white actually voluntarily gives this bishop here, knight bt2. This is the main line. You can actually see even the the number of players who have played this move, yeah? Like Kasparov, Varonian, Gelfan, every, everybody, basically. Mm. So because because if if this happens, this is considered very nice for white. White, white will play the same way, yeah? Like just e3, king h1, rook g1. Yeah. The, the very same caro can win. So my, so my point is, like, if this is a fairly open position, yeah. And even in the open positions, this uh, this is not proving that dangerous for white. So definitely in a closed position, like the one we saw right now, it's gonna favor white way more, way better actually. Right. I just saw a game from Daniel Fleetwood on that list <laughs> on that position. That's the guy that I played in Nashville. I think I told you about Unwish. Ah uh, yes, He's yes, a, yes. Uh, ICCF GM. Yeah, yeah, you, you did I mention. See he has one of his games is on there. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, pro probably like this is like oh yeah. So you mean this game, yeah? This one, yeah, yeah. This is of course this is one of the like I myself have like couple of games in this line as well, and uh, it's pretty uh, like it's very easy to play as white, you know. Yeah. So. Um... So can we say as a general rule of thumb that against the Fianchetto structure, the bishop most of the time will go on e7 and not on d6? Uh, yes. Most of the lines, uh, the bishop usually goes to e7 in many lines in this line. Okay. Especially, especially from black. Even if you check the main lines here, like let's say bishop b4, bishop d2, you can say the bishop has to come to e7. So you I can never do that. Things, yeah? Just come e seven. Okay, gotcha. It's it's usually yeah. the safest. Uh, I I'll just try to find some uh some of my games. I'm I'm pretty sure I have used this uh, idea like multiple times. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So let's let's just see this one. Um. The here, of course, I, I didn't have the necessity to do that, but you can see even here, I'm not putting it on d6, yeah? You you can actually check the lines here, like bishop e7 is the most played move. Because really the right. bishop has nothing to do on d6. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, of course, because I'm trying to play for a win, like trying to force matters, I go bishop here and okay, the more here, here it's a completely different thing, yeah. Because anyway, knight e5 is not a big threat. I can take it. Yeah. Because my knight is already not on f6. But if my knight was on f6, like let's say in this position, the only other move I was considering was bishop e7 here. Bishop bishop on d6 never is a good idea. Like it, it just comes under a lot of attack. That's that's the only right. Thing. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Right. So we'll go here. Okay. So why? I mean, white is following the typical plan in the fan, like the stone wall. Yes. Okay. Um, I think in the stone wall, basically the main plan is to actually kind of go queen c seven and rook b eight, and then black goes b five b four. Yes, I knew that that was gonna be one of my ideas. I. Like a minority attack? Um, yes. I... This is not exactly like a minority attack. I mean, because the pawn structure is similar, yeah? But it's more about like opening up the queen side, yeah, for black. 
I think I just put that book just because I didn't know what to do. So I just put a developing move. <laughs> didn't really have a plan, honestly, to be completely honest with you. I was waiting to see what he would do. Like, I, I didn't know if he was going to play h3, queen h4, queen g3. Was he going to take my bishop? I wanted to kind of wait for a second to see what his ideas were. I knew in general, obviously, he's going to launch a quick king's that attack. But I what is, I didn't want to commit Anything. my pieces necessarily on the queen side just yet until I can see what type of way he's going to launch the king side stuff, I guess you could say. But, but the rook is much better placed on b8, I think, anyway. Yeah, but but if that's the case, Rafi, maybe you should just play a6, yeah? If a6, you're right, probably... yeah. I should yeah. have, yes. Yes. Just don't change anything in the position. And now, anyway, b5. Like, you can just gradually right. expand on the queen side because king side, obviously, you don't have anything. And it's pretty right. natural that you are playing a reverse stone wall, yeah? Like, basically, white has split the Dutch defense. So you should go for the usual way how you do as white, you know? So just play on the queen side. And also, my rook has no future on the c file. What is it going to do? Every square exactly. is taken. Yeah, exactly. Actually, the, the point is why we say the rook on c8 is not important because anytime you take, he's going to take with the e pawn. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then as Kevin mentioned, yeah, you have to launch a minority attack. And if if you are going to launch a minority attack, you need your rook on b8. Yeah. Or else you can yeah. never get b5. Yes. Makes sense. So I think this rook c8 is a small inaccuracy, but probably doesn't change anything. Yeah. This move, I obviously don't like. I mean, of course, we should yeah. play f5. Yes, absolutely. I thought about it for a long time, actually, and I I don't know why. I, for some reason, thought that maybe he will try to pressure f5, make me play g6. Maybe at some point, then g6 will become kind of a weakness because he's going to be able to try to quickly pry, pry things open with g4, h4, rook g3, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll just quickly try to trade off the bishop, but... It makes no sense at all because if I play bishop h, first of all, I can't really trade the bishop for that bishop. He's gonna take it with the knight. First of all, second, once that happens, it's almost like inevitable he's gonna play knight f3, knight g5, and try to go for a checkmate on the h file. Yeah, of course. It's so I don't know why I honestly put this was I, in my opinion this is the biggest mistake I made in the whole game is not to is to play not not to play bishop f5 to play bishop h5 instead. Yeah, because I, I actually think it the completely the other way around. Like, you know, I mean, if this happens, yeah, and let's just say he goes queen h3 and g6, yeah? So this was your worrying point, right? Something like this, yeah. And I think this is very good. I, because... I also I also thought that maybe in some... Yeah, like he'll basically have a, a, a anchor to break open with f pawn on f5 like that. But it's the reverse way around, yeah? Like this pawn is actually preventing g4 from happening. Preventing g4, right, exactly. You're right. So now, now I'm just gonna play something like rook e8, queen e7, and wait for him. Like white has again no breaks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe at the right time I'll try to. So basically, I I know how to play this position. So I know that after rook e8, actually, black should first play this knight to f8, and then bring this knight to d7 and play f6, kicking this knight out. Oh, what about, what about like c4 here too? Uh, Lock in light squares. Yeah, C4 is actually the the next stage of the plan. Like when I want to completely break open the queen side, yeah. So I should go C4 and follow it up with B5, A5, B4, yeah. So just break open the queen All side. Right. So, but but before that, it's necessary to put some pressure on this guy so that white will be a little bit more yeah. awkward, let's say. Gotcha. And always to remember that white uh, always will struggle to move this knight because anytime this moves, I'm gonna jump in here. Mm -hmm. yeah, the other thing I was going to say yeah sorry sorry no, no, I was just saying he looks frozen in this position white does yeah like every yeah, piece is almost frozen yeah basically actually that, that is why I was a bit surprised when uh, he also went knight d2 because normally the rule says that uh, white should already play bishop d2 bishop e1 and get this bishop first out to some square yeah. like this and then play knight d2 Right, right, right. Like the the regular stone wall way, yeah. Or else, white should just try to play b three and bishop a three. You know, try to get rid of this bishop, which is also not a bad idea. But okay, that's just equalizing. It's not nothing special. But yeah, after this position, I think uh, now I think white has some 
like realistic chances yeah because he's getting his pieces but it's still not sure how he can do something here because he just doesn't have enough squares i guess so here i thought that i this is like where that misunderstanding misevaluation comes in i thought that at this point i'm definitely losing right because i thought there's nothing i can do to stop knight g5 queen h4 rook f3 rook h3 check me Okay. I was starting to calculate moves like rook e8, king f8, king e7 here, which is not how I should have been thinking about this position at all, I feel like. <laughs> Obviously not. I don't think it's that serious. I mean, I think at all point we have rook e8, knight f8, and knight f6 to knight f7, yeah? Yeah. Which pretty much should solve all our problems. Right. So yep. basically, rook e8, I think, is good. Uh, so he goes g4. Um, pro probably here itself, maybe we can come back like a fate. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless I'm not missing something tactical, I think we can do that. But okay, I, I just want to see what actually went wrong. Because so far, you have done the right plan, like the right defensive plan. And here he goes g5, yeah? Yes, because I thought there was nothing I can do to stop knight h, uh, queen h4 and rook h3 here. But but you st don't you still have knight f8? Oh, he goes queen h4. And then maybe yes. d7. Yeah, that's the point. But the Here's what I missed here. Here I have f5. I oh, didn't yeah, even you... consider the idea of playing f5, honestly, in the yeah. game. Okay. Just, just solves everything. Right. f5 and the king goes f7, e7 after that. Right. Because white has no knights, yeah? That's the problem. Right, yeah. I everything yeah definitely yeah this would this would have been the better try for sure yeah i think this was this was the slip yeah of course knight g5 is just like panicking i think i, I was thinking in the game that this is the only chance i have at a, at a fight and i was very happy that knight g5 existed i thought that i'm getting checkmated like there's nothing to i mean like i might as well resign Okay, so basically the point is now if white goes queen h4, we have f5, yeah? Right. And if if it takes, we just take with the queen or take with the pawn? Uh, we can take with the pawn, actually, I feel like. No, hold on. Queen. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can. And queen h6, we have king f7. Oh, no, we don't have king f7. We just go f5. And then queen f6 comes. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And white is a bit slow, yeah? Like, I mean, even if he gets e4, I think we still have f5, so... Mm -hmm. okay yeah makes sense yeah well black's position looks tricky but uh yeah okay some tactical defenses are there yeah not definitely not easy to play but you know i mean i'm surviving for sure and yeah yeah, yeah of course you know i think objectively the position is probably almost equal yeah well i i i would say that uh with like now, actually, rook c8, you know, kind of makes a little bit more sense because you you are getting this seventh rank defenses, yeah? Like, basically, right. I was thinking, like, let's just say f5 didn't exist here. We can still play rook c7 here. Right. He cannot take on g6. Is. Yeah, he cannot take on g6. I'm just going to take it and then put my rook on g7, rook on e7, and okay, I'm fine. That that bishop is so bad on C one that if you can survive an attack, I think you're winning outright, Robbie. Just my uh, my perspective. Yeah, he's playing yeah. down a couple of pieces basically on this attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's why you are able to sacrifice this pawn. You know, that is exactly what I was trying to say. That even if uh, White actually crashes, so obviously White cannot checkmate. Uh, White will probably win a pawn on G six, but even if he does that, I think. Uh, with pieces like on A1 and C1, converting a pawn is not so easy. So I was looking at this line. So bishop g6, knight g6. So rook g3 looks forced. And we just get rook on g7. So he takes this and we play rook e7. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or even queen d7. So, so let's just say if we get this position right now. So, okay, white will play king f2 something. I mean, is it is it that bad? Like... Or even, you know, like C4, completely shutting off everything. Yeah. It doesn't look so bad, yeah? I mean, okay, I'm I'm down a pawn, but I'm now threatening to play F5. Mm -hmm. And 
everything like even if you play bishop d2 rook g1 exchange queens everything there is no way white can win this end game with this pawn yeah because maximum it can do is come to h4 and by that time i'm gonna have my king on g6 like this can be a possible variation just speculating by the way right now so i can take mm -hmm. take play queen g7 let's say so king takes takes and there is no way black can lose this right i just fix c4 b5 king on g6 and wait with the bishop yeah makes sense so oh, these everything are, is on yeah these kind but, of attacks actually we we call them premature attacks you know because they never work and mm -hmm. this i think we we are actually making like um let's let's say the worst possible defenses yeah like we are trying rook c7 and stuff of course f5 here solves everything like f5 and queen f6 yeah there is no way for and then i'm gonna bring rook c7 rook h7 and probably black will be better here actually i'm a bit yeah. interested to know the evaluation of this position so I, as i told you yeah black is slightly better here wow interesting yeah, it has to be with the bishop on c1. It just it's frozen, right? Like all of black's pieces are defending, but only like two of white's pieces are not even in the attack right now. Right, black has everything in play to defend. Yeah, yeah. And basically, the rule says that if a queen and a rook is attack are attacking, and if you have a knight near your king, there is no attack. And not, with a knight on f8, there is no mate. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Knight on f8 is actually the best defender, yeah? Like, mm -hmm. okay, in, in many lines, this happens, so. So, basically, if it's it's white to move, right, in here? Yeah. Against white, uh, rook h3, what's the what's the plan for black? It has no, dif like, if, let's say I don't do anything, yeah? Like, for example, yes. let, I mean, no, I, I will play queen f6, obviously, like, take control of this square, but let's say okay. I don't do it. Let's say I play... Okay, rook c7, for example. Still, there is mm -hmm. no checkmate, you know, because you have only one check, yeah, and I just go here. Mm -hmm. You yeah. just don't have enough pieces to win. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it looks pretty deadly that the queen and rook are on edge file. And, and of course, like, this is obviously my... My second choice, I would say. Now, no further yeah. checks. Yep, that makes sense. And yeah, I don't know why I didn't even consider this F5 move. That would have just solved everything, honestly. Yeah, yeah, everything. So, knight g5, of course, was definitely... Now, now, now you can see, yeah, like, already white is getting his attacks. Right. And now, basically, this bishop will find new life, and yep, yep. black will just be a downer piece in this position. Right. Okay, so Rafi tried to open up, but it definitely works in white's favor here. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Is this like a... What's... Ah, okay, so later on, he can win on f7, yeah? Yes. So he goes... Queen he very nicely, and... yeah, went straight into a winning endgame, completely winning endgame. So he has... Just takes, 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 and okay, because mm -hmm. it's like one pawn less, yeah? Yeah. So he's also right on time to catch the pawn, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, this is just losing. And the deep pawn promotes, yeah? It's way too faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just lost. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty unfortunate, but uh, but yeah, okay. This is just like a small mistake, you can say. I think my biggest error here was just not understanding the characteristic of the position and like the piece placements. I didn't really understand it. Also, I think I struggle with locked positions a lot. I don't really play well when the position is locked up. Mm -hmm. And especially in situations where I need to find a break in order to find a defensive resource. I think I'm still struggling in those kind of situations. Like yeah. here, I the idea of playing F5 didn't even occur to me at all. I didn't even consider that. Mm, okay. Yeah, that that's actually, I mean, I think that's the take from this game. I mean, the other Bishop F5 stuff, that's very easy to remember. 
but if you end up in these things like yeah you have to be ready with defensive resources yeah right so that's a huge uh, like huge take from this game at least i would say yeah <clears throat> But yeah, actually, F5, I mean, uh, Knight F8, F5 just solves everything, yeah? Yes, yeah, I think so too. Oh, interesting. So just interested how the computer is suggesting. So Knight F8, so of course, Bishop D2. So you can see, yeah, I mean, this is a clear indication. Actually, look, I like the computer's idea of playing Bishop D2 and pushing pawns on this side of the board now. Because it already knows there's no attack on the king side, right? Yeah, so he wants to now try to dominate or do something on the queen side. Yeah, exactly. Because I think, uh, like, even when I mean, just looking at the position. So after playing f5 and king f7, uh, white will obviously try to get this h4 h5 break. Yeah, somehow. Mm -hmm. So basically, the game will go on. I mean, it's probably equal, but it's not drawn yet. Mm. So white has. So it's like white is still playing on both sides of the board, and I still think. It's going to end up in a draw. I mean, the evaluation is like, as I told you, yeah, Stockfish has some preference for the space advantage position. So here, White definitely has slightly more space. So he's giving like slight advantage, but I can already see that uh, the moves which like which the line is showing here, it's so he is actually trying for the H4 idea here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is just good. I mean, this is just a tip, regular middle game. So it's nothing to be. So the line they're suggesting is something like this: King h1, Knight d7. Wow. Okay. So Bishop d2, Queen a5. So Queen g2, Queen a4, and some Bishop e1. So basically, White is getting ready for h4, h5. That's what I can see. Mm -hmm. And okay, the game goes on after that. I mean, it's just a just a position which we have to play on. But practically speaking, though, I mean, it's still more difficult for black to play this than white, I think, right? Definitely. White has no black risk. has to be extremely accurate to find these defensive resources. I, I still believe that given the choice, I don't think anybody would want to get into this situation with black. Yes, uh, I think the, I mean, like, let, let's just say that uh, even if you find knight f8, and as I told you, like, if white just plays bishop d2 and gets this rook into the game, uh, mm -hmm. Black has no plans. Yeah, that's the worst part. Right. So black has to spend like some knight d7, king f8, king e7 moves, and even after that, black has no breaks because I right. don't think we can play e5 or f6. Like it's horrible. And you right. can actually understand. Yeah. Uh, given this position, white still has the permanent advantage of a double bishops, right? So, yeah. Open up the position wrongly, White will be better in most of the upcoming end games, you know, because of his double bishops. Mm. And White still has some potential chances of getting h5 and also playing on the queen side. So I don't think yes. it's that great to like be on the black side of this position. It's difficult, of course. I don't think it's going to be a checkmate, but it's definitely unpleasant to play. I see. So, so. This so this actually means this bishop h5 was probably the root cause, yeah, of all the problems. Yeah. Bishop on f5, I, there is no problem because White's whole strategy is like putting all the pawns on dark squares, and that means he wants to activate this bishop, yeah. So we should just trade it. Yeah, and if even then, I mean, like this queen g3 is not even accurate. I think the queen really goes on h4 because now he's he can't play h3 and g g4, right? By putting the queen on g3, he should have played queen h4. I think. Well, no, I think queen h4 still. I will play bishop f5. No, actually, for white, I think because the the central tension is still not resolved, probably white should just grab this bishop. You know, so something like queen e2. And f5 and maybe c4. So, um, interesting. So white, white should probably try to just now. White is planning to play b3, bishop b2, and okay, like I will play this position. Yeah. Yeah. 
because in this position, if we put white uh, black spawn on c6, black is like very solid. There is no way we can break black's position anymore. Right. But here, but, white can open this up whenever yeah. he wants to, right? And the two yeah, bishops will play themselves. Yeah, because you have so many pawns on light squares. Yeah, no bishop to defend them. So interesting. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's that's a. That's probably, I mean, that's my understanding of this position. I think there are there are many things which we are missing, but this is, of course, like looking logical. And yeah, if, if you come back with knight f6, then white starts g4. Because normally we should be able to meet g4 with knight e4, but that's not happening right now. But, but I should tell you, yeah, the idea of g4 is never a kingside checkmate. The idea of g4 is always to... Like just gain space on the king side. I see. Okay. But yeah, like a just just a regular game, you can say. After yeah. That. And just give me one second. Yeah, sure. Oh, so Kevin, uh, hang on. I actually invited Rafi to this. Uh, I mean, my games basically, which I'm playing. So I'll just uh, invite you as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Oh, oh my name is PIG1. One, yeah, I, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, thank so you. far, uh, so far, I have played like already eight rounds. Um, pretty bad day for. Um, black side <laughs> but uh, okay. I mean I, I lost a couple of games as black but both to grandmasters uh, but okay like uh, it was very long games and both the games I was defending and uh, are you an I am or FM and wish I am uh, I'm an I am yeah yeah okay so I thought okay and uh, but but I think the the weirdest game I had was probably today, <laughs> which was very so the last game. If you if you will have some time, definitely have a look at that. I'm going through it right now. Oh wow, he played the, the last five. one. Yeah, the last one. This this one I was black. I mean, this was a pretty easy game actually. I mean, this was easy in the sense that my opponent uh, played this G4 idea and didn't take the bishop. <laughs> I mean, he right. wanted to put his bishop on F4 for some reasons. I don't understand why, actually. And even here, he goes again and still doesn't take it. Seems very confused. Yeah, he was. Uh, I mean, already it's... It makes no sense actually to take that bishop because black has a very comfortable game and c5 is coming here yeah, very soon. And okay, now I get this bishop on d3 and queen on a6 and white cannot castle anymore. Wow. And I think at some point I just decided to open up the position completely. Like he, he actually fell for my trick here. I anyway wanted to sacrifice everything now. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like he's getting demolished. Where am I? Yeah. yeah his, wow. His king, his king is just caught in a very weird checkmating net. Oh my god. That <laughs> might move. Demolish. <laughs> <laughs> so the central break, of course, worked very nicely uh in, in this position. Like I, I I mean, I knew it should come at some point, you know, when you look at the position. And you look at this king stuck in the center, but but yeah, it just came at the right moment. Yeah, he got destroyed. Holy crap! Mm. Yeah, nice game. Yeah, so you guys can look at the games. I mean, I will be updating two more games as soon as they finish. So okay. Yeah, but, but Thank yeah. You. So I'll be, I mean, all my tournaments I'll be putting here. So like you you guys will probably get like maybe 20 more games or something. Nice. Okay. Cool. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Uh, so Rafi, are there any other games uh, you would like to 
Sure, or rest you have already gone with Naim? I've covered them pretty, yeah, pretty thoroughly with Naim. Uh, the rest of them were, I mean, pretty straightforward. I don't think I had any major, uh -huh. like, errors or anything like that. If any uh, inaccuracies happen, it's because of time pressure, I think. So uh -huh. I feel pretty comfortable with the rest of them. Okay, all right. Then no issues. Um, so I think uh, then, Rafi, we can probably wrap up for today. Okay. And we'll uh, resume. So in the weekends this time, I just have two more games to end this event. So weekend sounds good. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll let you know. Saturday, Sunday, we can try to go for for sure. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. So you. I'm so going to be done until um, probably January. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so count me out, but good luck on your games. And thank you. And Thanks. I'll be Thanks a lot. Good luck. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. See you. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.